Happy Monday and a very warm welcome to Smell the Coffee, your favorite morning talk show with Diana Master and Aina Riza Cuello, where all you have to do is grab your cup of joe, sit back and relax while we keep you up to speed with the latest in entertainment and some bizarre news. How are you doing? I'm doing good. How are you doing? I'm doing well. How doing was good. the weekend? Um, it was cute. Yeah? It was, it was cute. What did you get up to? <laughs> you know, I realized this. Mm. We use cute now for just nonsense things. Someone asked me something and I was like, it was cute. And he, and he said to me, what, what does, does that mean? mean? Like it was nice. I think he asked me, he's like, so how was your day? I was like, no, it was cute. And he said, what do you mean it was cute? I'm like, oh, no, you know. It was nice. It was nice. It was, yeah. Cute. It's just, yeah, yeah, it's just how you describe it. I didn't get up to much. Mm. I went out on Friday night. Mm -hmm. And I even told myself Friday evening, Friday in the afternoon, I was like, I looked. I look cute. Mm. I deserve to go out tonight. And just like that, and I got a call. Went. Hey, let's go out. I'm like, say less. Nice. So we went. Um, what did I do on Saturday? Saturday, I didn't do much. Mm. Sunday either, which was very nice because I, I feel well rested. Yeah. I feel well rested. How was your weekend? Uh, my weekend, I could say, was great as well can't remember what i did yeah. i probably didn't do anything <laughs> that was memorable <laughs> uh but nonetheless i think i had a great weekend mm -hmm. not memorable not memorable but it was it was fine yeah it was fine i guess we i can read say a quote that. that said remember it is not a bad life it's a bad day in a good life Sometimes it's bad days. Yeah, sometimes it's bad days, but good life nonetheless. I think it's one of those affirmations that you must just make when, you ha when you're having a bad day. Just remember, okay, it's not a bad life. It's a bad day in a good life. I think I was having more of anxiety over the weekend. I hate that. It's like... I'm just, I was just very, very anxious. Mm, and you don't know why. For no reason. I think maybe it's an accumulation of all the maybe rejections mm. from the past that now I just feel like. A manifesting. Uh, no, I just feel like unworthy. Like it's giving me anxiety mm. to think that, okay, you're so good at this and that and that and that, but you've not gotten that and that and that. Mm, are see. you really like worthy? Mm. Are you really good as you think you are? Yeah. It's just like, why am I not getting this thing? Oh, geez. Yeah, it's just. So you're basically suffering from imposter syndrome. I no, say. I don't think I have imposter syndrome. I know that I'm good, but yeah. why are other people not seeing this goodness? Oh, so it wasn't like, a, oh, but am I as good as I think I am? No. It was, okay. I'm yeah. I, I, you know, I learned something recently. They say that you have a second heartbeat, mm. basically. Like if you lie down and you press on your navel, like deep down, you'll feel like a pulse mm. and they say that's your gut instinct that's why you should never ignore your gut instinct because apparently it's been somewhere like it's been it's like three four weeks ahead of mm. you so that's why when something doesn't feel right in your soul it's because your soul has been there before mm. so now your body in the 3d has to catch up to that your spirituality is very interesting wild stuff. nevertheless <laughs> we'll take a quick ad break and return with our top stories We start off our top stories on a very sad note. It is a sad, 
it was rather a sad weekend for all Friends fans. Matthew Perry, Friends, a TV comedy star, dies at 54. US actor Matthew Perry, best known for playing Chandler Bing in the hit 90s TV sitcom Friends, has died at the age of 54. The actor was found dead at his home in Los Angeles, law enforcement sources told US media. Friends, which followed the fortunes of six young friends living in New York City, aired from 1994 until 2004. The LA Times and TMZ which first reported that Perry had died, said the actor was found unresponsive in a hot tub at his house. Perry battled for years with addiction to painkillers and alcohol and attended rehabilitation clinics on multiple occasions. In 2016, he told BBC Radio 2 that he could not remember three years of filming during Friends because of drink and drugs. In an interview last year, he spoke about how he did not watch the show. I didn't watch the show and haven't watched the show because I could go on drinking opiates, drinking cocaine, he said. I could tell season by by season by how I looked that's why I don't want to watch it because that's what I see but I think I'm going to start watching it because it's been an incredible thing to watch it touch the hearts of different generations may his soul rest in peace may his soul rest in peace it's so sad it's very sad um shame. you know to see that his life like just ended like that just found dead you know what sucks is you don't actually know what someone is going through. Mm -hmm. So as much as he was making people laugh on Friends and all of that, he was also battling his own demons. Mm. That's why my mom always says to me, be nice to someone because you don't know what they're going through. You don't know what battles they're fighting. Mm. So yes, some people take it out. On other people, like I could come and just snap at you because I'm going through whatever it is. But then sometimes, like maybe you're just quiet yeah. and then I just come and snap at you. Next thing you go jump off a building and it's like, oh, Mm. <clears throat> but that's because that was the last straw. So it's really sad to see that as much as he was bringing laughter and smiles to all these different generations, he, he was, was also suffering. He was suffering. Yeah. But nonetheless, we move over to our next story. A restaurant in the U.S. is charging some of its customers for their inability to control their children while they dine at this particular restaurant. Hidden away at the bottom of its menu, the Taco Riverside restaurant tells its diners of its adult surcharge, um, adding $3.00 adding a $3 sign next to the word for adults unable to parent. The menu adds no respect, no service. For some diners, they found out the hard way, saying they were sprung with charges as they tried to settle their bill. Kyle Landman left a review online and said, The owner came out and told me he was adding a $50 to my bill because of my children's behavior. My kids watched a tablet until the food arrived, ate their food, and my wife took them outside while I waited to pay the bill. His wife, uh, Miss Ledman, told BBC News Today, uh, sorry, told BBC News, the Today Show, that I remember thinking there is no way this is real. I like it. But how I absolutely love it. I can't tell you how many times you're just trying to enjoy your money. Yeah! It's like, what is it? But this is unwarranted because um, what... What? <laughs> no, like, how do we measure good behavior for okay, children? Okay, yeah, there's also that. But the thing is, with But kids, he's saying that his children watch the tablet the whole day. There's no parent that is ever going to say, my child was a rowdy. Yes, I understand that. That exactly, which then brings me to my next, to my previous question, what measures good behavior? Well, I guess the restaurant then has to print out what rules. good behavior is. Yes, yeah. print out the rules to say no tablets, no mm -hmm. yelling, no... Oh, you know what he could just do? He could just say no children allowed. That's it. Yes. That's it. Because the thing is, being a parent, sometimes you can't control your child. That's just the truth of the matter. And I know people say, oh, that child wasn't beaten up enough or whatever. But sometimes, no matter how much you try, and this is me speaking from... All the times I've helped my sisters and my cousin raise their children as well. I have this one cousin who believed in corporal punishment. Mm. Like, her child does something, she's ready to beat him up. Mm. But even still, there were moments she couldn't control him. 
So it's really not a thing of your child is spoiled. Kids will embarrass you. Sometimes just start throwing tantrums in public and you don't know what to do. And also, why are these costs at the end of the menu? <laughs> why are, are they not to begin with so that people don't miss these costs? Mm. It's, it seems as if it's an ambush. Like, you just, I'm just going to make you pay. Mm. But this is not something that I was expecting. Why do you not inform me when I walk in the restaurant, when the waiter comes to our table to serve us just immediately when they come bringing the menu to greet us why do they they not say to us when they see us but with children but didn't they say there's a sign that says three dollars or whatever at the end Only of at the, the end. menu oh, okay. no, at that's... the end of the menu no. it's an ambush it is an ambush but then i can just refuse to pay because i can say you know i didn't know about this if i knew about this i wouldn't have sat to dine at your restaurant it's, yeah. just, it's just not make sure. It's not good manners, <laughs> restaurant owner. You know what else is not make sure? Mm. This Spanish duke who was told to shorten his daughter's 25-word long name. Yes, her name is 25 words long. Yeah. The Spanish duke has been told he cannot name his daughter what he wants because her name <sighs> is too long. Fernando Fitzjames Stewart will need to significantly shorten his daughter's name if he wants her legally registered. The 17th Duke of Husca and his wife, Sofia Palazuelo, recently baptized their second child. This is the name. Sofia Fernanda Dolores Caetana Teresa Angela de la Cruz Micaela del Santismo Sacramento do Perpetuo Socorro de la Santisma Trinidad y Teros Los Santos. The aristocrat... <laughs> A direct descendant of King James II of England has told has been told the register rules state that the name given to a child must not exceed more than one compound name and two simple ones. The name is reportedly a tribute to the deceased Duchess of Alba, other members of the family, and religious devotions. What in the hell is going on? Why are so many names? <laughs> Twenty-five like... names. Okay, but like, keep those names off the birth certificate. Like, honestly, like, besides, just put one in the same name or two in the same name, and then the rest can still be the child's name, but that are not on the certificate. The, you know, it reminds me of my friend. She had such a long name. Uh -huh. And you know, when they gave us question papers, either oh, for exam no. or for test, her name wouldn't fit oh, by the no. provided line. So we always made fun of her. Oh, Show shame. me, your name is so long. <laughs> oh, shame, man. People give me grief because of because i i love hyphenated names mm -hmm. right so that's why my daughter has a hyphenated name and everyone's like that's so long i'm like listen it's not your child it's mine mm -hmm. i'm gonna name her what i want but this 25 this words does not make sure I say, 25 names, like i doubt that child will even grow up knowing all of her names yeah like okay what do you call her de la rentes oh, so maria wait is, is there also maria Micaela, it's oh, Micaela. Sofia, Fernanda, Dolores, Caetana, Teresa, Angela de la Cruz, Micaela, de Santismo, Sacramento, do Perpetuo, Socorro de la Santisma, Trinidad y, te, y de Todos los Santos. Okay, what do we call her, Teresa? We just call her, I guess we just call her Sofia. Sofia Fernanda is nice. Yeah. Sofia Fernandez. No, I understand that you want to pay <laughs> tribute to... Those are all the names, right? <laughs> I understand that you would like to pay <laughs> tribute like to the people that you've lost in your life. I understand that you also want to be a good <laughs> Christian, you know, and pay homage to the Lord Almighty. I understand, like, but no. no. <laughs> Look, it's still going. It's still going. You would think the ticker restarted. No, these are all her names. De Tondos Los, Son uh, Los Santos. Los Santos. Yes. I know I would cry, but like, why do you hate me? And you know, in our culture, like we believe in naming mm. kids. Like, let's say, oh, I had a great aunt, Aina. So I'm going to name my daughter, Aina. My mom put her foot down and she said, I am not giving my child anyone's name because she will carry whatever that person had. The bad energy. The bad energy. The habits. No. That's exactly. why I also don't believe in naming my... I, I don't have children now, but I don't think my mm. child will be named after anyone. Yeah. No. Make it your own name. Make her or him start their own legacy Please. and their own thing. Now my child must take what Auntie who, who Auntie Teresa had, and Auntie Teresa had her demons. No, thank and you. And like, uh, people are not all bad. 
Mm. People are also not all good. Exactly. So. Nah. What do uh, you think of this 25 word long name? Let us know in the comments. We will be right back after the break. Lenora Shapura is speaking yoga and wellness. Stay tuned. Neopaints has established a 67-year Namibian legacy, creating personalized paint solutions that blend quality and innovation for the Namibian people. We pride ourselves in being a 100% Namibian-owned company, investing in our country and our people by employing and empowering true Namibians. With every brush stroke, Neo Paints commits to our quality guarantee and always delivering a coat of excellence. At Neo Paints, we always stay true to our country. We are as Namibian as you. Now, I did mention that I'm not a lover of sports, but yoga, it has my heart. I'm now joined by the co-founder of the Yoga Garden. Good morning. How are you? And Hi. welcome to Smell the Coffee. Hi, thank you. Good to have you here. Good to have you too. Um, can I say that yoga is a sport? What is yoga? Uh, we always refer to yoga not as a sport, but rather a lifestyle. Because a lifestyle. Um, the most, when you see yoga in TVs or on pictures, you will see the movement part of yoga, but yoga is so much more. So you will see that uh, we are also doing breathing exercises. We are also working a lot of um, mind, like the mind or the mindfulness attitude that you need for yourself to support groundedness or to support your balance within yourself. So it's way more, it becomes a lifestyle. It becomes rather a habit to, to, for well-being in your life. I see. Can you tell us the inspiration behind starting your yoga community? I know you told me before, <laughs> that this is a yoga community and it's not a yoga studio, which is really, really cool. And um, what was the inspiration behind starting it? Yes, you know, it's rather a personal story, but I, I will share it with you. Yes. So um, yoga in itself since years has been has been a very, very important resource for me when it comes now to points in my life where I really needed a good support or a groundedness because everything else in my life was rather so chaotic. Mm. And I found yoga and yoga found me. <laughs> and it's such, I would call it a medicine because it has played a, a vital part for me to get better in many, many points and aspects in my life. So that kind of resource, I feel it is something so sacred to keep it for just yourself. So um, yogis will always want to share that with other people to have that resource for yourself. Because once you start doing yoga, you will know wherever you are in your life, even when you're alone, you can just do it for yourself and you will feel better. I like to think of myself as a yogi, but I, I feel I'm not at you guys' level yet. <laughs> But what would you say, because I've been to like so many different yoga studios, especially when I travel, I try to go see what's out there, I've tried to do heated yoga and etc. What sets your yoga community, I know it's not a studio, what sets your yoga community apart from the others? Yes, I think it's exactly what you're saying, that we are actually viewing ourselves as community and not mm. as a studio, because um, the point is, I mean, you're seeing the space. It is an open space and it is a metaphor actually for how we do things also within our community, because there, with us, there's no subscription, there's no registrations. It's rather um, you come when you feel like you want to do yoga. It's not like when you're in a gym and yes. you, you pay, for example, for the whole month. And, and then I have to come. And then I have to come. I paid. I need to come. <laughs> yeah. With us, it's rather the people come because it's their own one hour of self-care. It's their own one ritual that they have to start their week off nicely on a Monday because they want to come mm. and not because something else is pressuring them. So it's... Uh, we have this more unique approach of how people want I to like show that. Up. I like that you just show up on the day that you can mm -hmm. and you, you're part of the community. And I like that it's it's better than the guilt trip of, oh, I didn't go today <laughs> and I'm paying for the whole month. Um, in a world filled with so many um, alternatives in terms of fitness, you know, there's so many, there's CrossFit, there's et cetera, et cetera. Why would you say yoga sets it apart for you as your preferred choice of, you know, Tackling the mind, um, trying to be fit and also trying to have a good mental health. Yes, I would say because the variation of yoga is just so vast. For me, yoga, if I, if I have a really down day and I just don't have energy in my body anymore, I will not do crazy 
crazy stuff like your your back pants on your beautiful acrobatic poses <laughs> that you see many times on pictures on Instagram. Ooh. I would rather really just sit on my mat, maybe in child's pose and just try to settle and become better and try to, you know, relax from the day in, in a way more let's say calm way of yeah. doing this and this is also yoga and it's a very very valid part of yoga it's not just the nice things that you see on pictures and the videos i really like what you said earlier when i asked you if yoga is a sport and you said it's a lifestyle mm. which people don't really um connect to that yoga is more than what you do on the mat what you do on the mat you take with home that's some of the lessons i've gotten from it um what yes, would because you, i mean yoga yeah. yoga itself it has a sister science of ayurveda i don't mm. know it's the science of life and um, ayurveda now includes also to you know your nutrition what kind of nutrition is good for your body and at what times and yeah. at what type of nutrition is good for which type of body you have and also what kind that. of <laughs> yes and also yeah. which kind of activities are important for the type that you are or for the time of the day that you are moving in so there's a lot of aspects within yoga and around yoga that is related and it plays a huge role in holistic health let's put it like that okay so can you tell us a little bit about the yoga practice that you guys have here and mm -hmm. what what do you guys practice at the yoga garden what type of different styles are they and what's the practice really like uh, i know you guys told me before there's a little bit of breath work yes. and i'm so excited about that but um, i would like to hear more yes it's um it's interesting because we are two teachers here and both of us we have a really very unique approach to classes so my colleague whom you will speak to she has a very traditional approach of doing hatha yoga it's called like that so she will go into the traditional asanas which are the poses now she does the yogic approach of breath work um, and really that helps people who are getting new into yoga to get also that cultural view of where, what are the roots of yoga really and where is it coming from, what is important here. Ah. And then the classes that uh, I focus on would rather also have a small twist of incorporating some movements of Pilates and some alternative breathing techniques and some mindfulness exercises of your affirmations or things like that. So whatever class you're attending, it Ooh. will be different each time and it you will so find delicious. what you will search. I am just like, wow, this sounds so <laughs> delicious. Like what? There's also affirmations involved. I mean, I, I can't wait. I can't wait. I'm definitely going to come to one of the classes. That's great. Welkom jullie, mijn naam is Brian Monango en ik is jullie aanbieder voor Goeie Kolle. Dit is donderdagse sportstrijd nu. Einde van hierdie program sal ek en hoe om vriends te vraag. Is jy maar pel? Is jy by? Le Jol. Ik wil daar iets om my kool. Is dit nou onderbroek? Ik ben gaan skakel, we sien jullie weer vredag volgende week. Goeie koor! Goeie koor! E-Ticket, your online ticket solution for events and event marketing. Bringing you ease of mind and making sure that your event gets out there. For more information, contact events at nmh.com.na. Well, that is all the time we have for you today on Smell the Coffee. I would definitely say my favorite story was the 
I think the restaurant one. Mm. The restaurant one was definitely interesting. That's wild. Like, don't do that. Like, uh, if uh, if that happens to me, mm -hmm. I'm never dining there ever again. Oh, no, obviously, he's definitely chasing customers away. But and I'm telling all my friends to not, to go, not go there. there. I am not recommending. I'm rating that restaurant zero. Minus <laughs> Even five if stars. the food was good, I think yeah. it's just rude. Uh, but that's what I was saying, right? Um, that he must just then say no children yes. allowed. That's it. That's it. It's it's kind of like a wedding. Mm -hmm. You will get grief for saying no children allowed. Personally, I'm not going to have kids at my wedding. Mm -hmm. Because imagine that time and they're like, I will love you for the rest. Ah! Mm -hmm. <laughs> 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 or that time you're walking in your tent and it's just little people running just around. Just running up and down. No, no children. Yeah, I hear. No. So he must I just also say, don't recommend children at <laughs> wedding. wedding, no. <laughs> anyway, not say, even at funerals. Leave mm, the children at home. Leave the children Why at home. are you restricting the children, confining them mm -hmm. into this restricted environment? This Asking them to behave yeah. and sit. Because and, kids sit get very quiet. antsy and they get bored and they, mm. want, they want action. You can't just let them sit there. Even if they're on their tablets because we live in an iPad generation. Mm. But still, that mm -mm. I think this man actually added that because of previous experiences like past experiences yeah. so i was like you know what since y'all don't want to leave your kids at home i'm gonna charge you uncalled for <laughs> all right and that brings us to the end of today's episode we will be back tomorrow same time same place it's all our love all our light and adios, adios.